Did men close them in here? Yeah, but I also started hearing the scary man. I think they did horrible things to them. They don't know who he is. But then all of a sudden I hear a growl, but I didn't hear it on the headphones. I could hear it behind me. He usually says, like, get in the bed and he growls sometimes. Yeah, because we're talking to them from this timeline, but they're talking to us from theirs. And people come through and say, did you know you have a woman buried in your basement? And I'm like, what are you talking about? To the scary man just front of us room. Which is oh. why I wanted to leave. <laughs> Mr. Nice Man in the hallway, will you make sure that we can walk upstairs safely? <laughs> Sorry, it's Chip. Yeah. That's not him. Yeah. <sighs> Knock it off. You guys better record this. I was like, say, step over here. You ready? I don't know what she's yelling at me. I just said, Three, two, one. You just gonna walk? Get You ready? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Em. And I'm Whip. And we're your better sidekicks. Love is scared. We're at the Madison Seminary in front of, I don't know what you would call this, but we're in the attic, the upstairs floor. And we just did high our- High security, sorry. I heard someone say it. Like it's high security. Ah, makes sense. But uh, this is where they would house the, uh, I don't know. Mentally, what. physically, and criminally insane and disabled. So it's uh, scary and sad, but we just did our tour and our mediumship walkthrough, and I'm sure this intro is gonna happen before all of that. <laughs> but <laughs> we're at the Madison Seminary, and um, if you want to check out the rest of our trifecta of videos, we also went to the Franklin Castle and the Fairfield Infirmary. So, infirmary. 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 To work? Infirmary. To what? <laughs> I wrote down a bunch of notes I tried, but cool. it, it was hard. Where's Hal? There we go. Oh. I just think yeah. summing it up while I'm walking. Sorry, you said you something. The doll. Yeah, you said yeah. something to the doll, and obviously, if I was sitting here for a while looking at them. This one feels hollow, because whatever, it just looks scary. But this one like hums, and when I said that, she gave me the. Yeah, I thought so. Um, she gave me the image of her head turning and her eyes closing and opening. I love that. So that's what I was like, oh. That's nice. Yeah. So you are haunted, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I shouldn't make fun of you, huh? <laughs> uh, they say that you need to be nice to her, and if you're nice to her, then. Yeah, she doesn't like careful. me because okay. I'm like looking at her like that. <sighs> like, nice look at you. Me. Look at that thing. Look at you. Look at that thing. Why are you next to that? <laughs> Did men close them in here? In, 19, in the 1956, they brought in a program called Opportunity Village, and this is where they brought in women prisoners from Marysville Prison, and they house up like 13 women down here is what they called honor inmates. Basically, they're waiting to be paroled. I think they did horrible things to them. So, right now we are standing in the oldest part of the building. It was built in 1847. Started off as a school for boys between like the ages of 15 to 18. Um, the really cool thing was is during that time, if when they graduated, they didn't have to go on to a higher education. They would actually graduate with um, doctrines, being like a doctor, scientist, a teacher, preachers. That's where their name Madison Seminary comes from. Then in 1890, or I'm sorry, wrong year, 1889, the Women's Relief Corps purchased the building and made it a place for women that were misplaced during the Civil War. Our most famous being a woman named Elizabeth Stiles. She was actually born and raised in Ashtabula. Um, five years old, she could shoot a gun. By the time she was 15 or 16, she knew nursing skills that she learned from her mom. 
Um, she gets married in 1862 and moves down to the Kansas-Missouri border. Back then, you were either Confederate or you were Union. She was a big supporter of the Union, and every day as a school teacher, she'd go out and she'd raise the Union flag. The Confederates actually saw her do that and told her she did it again, they were going to kill her. Um, she was a toughie. She went out the very next day, raised that flag again. Um, the Confederates saw her do it, followed her to her home, found out where she lived, went and found Union soldiers, killed them, took their uniforms, went back to the house at nightfall, knocked on the door. Her and her husband answered the door together and they say, what are your politics? They say Union soldiers, so right away they say Union. They shoot him, he falls to the ground. They take the muzzle of the gun, put it in his mouth and blow off his head right in front of her. She runs to get out the back door. Um, one of them raises his gun to shoot her and the leader says, no, don't shoot her, she's too pretty to shoot. They let her go. Um, so from there, she wants to avenge her husband's death. She joins the army as a nurse. She's getting all this information from injured Confederates. Abraham Lincoln finds out about this, asks her to be a Union spy. She agrees right away and travels across 17 different states Look, getting all this information. She's so good at her job, she gets caught. She convinces them she's working for, him, for them. She brings back a horse, food, ammunition, everything she brought right back to the Union. And the reason she's so near and dear to our hearts is she actually lived the last four years of her life here. She's buried at the cemetery that's up the road. Okay. There's a lady in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't look like this before. I feel like there was like a little desk here and she's sitting at it. Or maybe it's over there. But she's sitting right here. What's her name? What? I don't know her names. What's her name? <laughs> I know her name. That's I don't, but I, I don't know how to get names. You can ask. I don't know how to get names. But it's pretty we, easy. Yeah, but we you got so many names last night. You get explanation for names. I usually just know names. What was her occupation? She had an occupation. <laughs> I just saw her. Women say can that. have <laughs> jobs, Emily. She had a lot of jobs. <laughs> I didn't, I don't know where we are. <laughs> We're in the boys' room. No, we're not. <laughs> yes, this is. This is the women's wing. This is originally the boys' wing, and then it, it turned into the women's. Yes, afterwards. but she's talking to a woman. Oh, yeah, there's a lady with white hair. It's like pinned up. Is she like some sort of secretary? I don't know. She's sitting at a desk, like writing things. Ask her. If you're not Ask asking. <laughs> You can do it. I believe in you. She's very nice and she's a fucking badass and her name is not hard to guess. It's one of the women in white's names. So is her name Sarah or Elizabeth? There. Oh. Here you go. <laughs> Which one is it? Ask her. <laughs> Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Claire Coggins is, is a bitch sometimes. It is. <laughs> because I think in thoughts too. Yeah, so you just like, you're like, mm, there's someone standing there and you have nothing to back it up and you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how I get names. Liv yeah. They like are like, oh, whoever the martyr girl was. It's not yeah. always like that. Let me that. just explain to you your grandma's Literally. great, 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 great yeah. uncle had Dude, this I was name at the bank. to the left of that that starts with an E. <laughs> I was literally at the bank and the, there was a lady helping us do the bank stuff. And I just like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, her name's Lisa. Her name's Lisa. Her name's Lisa. I look at her name tag. Her name is not Lisa. And I was like, Okay. Wasn't it Lisa? No! Her spirit guide's name is Lisa! So oh. I was like, who the fuck is Lisa? And she shows up and I'm like, I hate you. Um, paranormal on this floor, we get a seven foot tall shadow man who walks the, the area. He doesn't just stay on this side though, he does go to the other side, he goes everywhere. Um, but he is definitely taller than this. Um, I saw him actually in the room right behind you guys. I was in the other room and we, me and another girl actually saw him take a step towards us and then he was gone. We get what sounds like women singing or humming, or sometimes when you come up the stairs, you might hear chatting, footsteps on the stairs. It's not one particular room on this floor, it's the whole area. I mean, you pretty much get stuff. This is a really good area for EVPs, too. We get a lot of EVPs on this side. So the building's been many different things over the years. Um, it was first the school, like I said, then Women Joy the Poor, then it became a place known for soldiers, their wives, their widows, their mothers, pretty much anybody military or military related could come here. Then in 1898, they started to build the other side. It completed in 1901, and by 1904, it was known as something called the Madison Home. This is where they still had retired military, but they would also have women who had like dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, then we had the insane asylum on the top floor, which housed the criminally insane, mentally insane, physically handicapped, mentally handicapped. Um, 
In, 19, in the 1956, they brought in a program called Opportunity Village, and this is where they brought in women prisoners from Marysville Prison, and they house up to like 13 women down here as what they called honor inmates. Basically, they're waiting to be paroled. Um, and most of these women would have been here for like really petty crimes, such as writing bad checks, um, petty theft, things like that. But we did have one woman, her name was Blanche Jacobs. Um, she was actually here for double homicide. And 1956, the same year this opened, she actually killed her neighbors. Um, she was writing bad checks on their account. They found out that it was her, called her up, said either you're gonna have to give us the money back or we're gonna have to prosecute. She goes next door, um, Mrs. Robinson, who was 73 at the time, was in the basement baking pies. Blanche comes down there, they get into a heated argument, Blanche picks up a rolling pin, hits her over the head with it, she falls to the ground. The husband hears a commotion, who's 74 at the time, comes down the stairs, she grabs a butcher knife, slices him to death. Turns around, Mrs. Robinson actually woke up and was trying to get out of the place. She tracked her down, dragged her back, sliced her to death. Took both of their bodies, put them in a the bathroom. Cleaned the whole house with bleach, went home to a family friends, basically that the Robinsons had to went on vacation. Um, from there, she holds up, up the straight for like three days. She finally tells her husband, I killed the Robinsons. He honestly doesn't believe her. She physically had to take him to the bodies and show him where, what she had done. She tries to plead insanity, ends up in um, Lima State Hospital for a while, proves that she's not insane, ends up getting two back-to-back -back life sentences to be served in Marysville. She ends up here after only four short months, um, taking care of the elderly like she just killed, which didn't really make sense to us. So we um, dug into her a little bit, and we found out that her husband was very high-ranking in the military, military-ran building. We think he just had some pull with getting her here sooner. Um, the really cool thing was, is all of our superintendents lived in the building, and our last superintendent of the building, Delbert Nixon, um, she actually became a nanny to his children. Um, they're still alive today, and they came and walked us through the building and told us all about how, the, how it was while they were here, and they were talking about Blanche, saying she was the best woman ever, she'd bake us pies, she'd get us off the bus, she'd play with us outside. We're like, okay, I guess everybody has a bad day once in a while. Um, <laughs> But down here, we do get women. Um, none of them ever gave us the name Blanche, but we do get women down here from time to time. But the majority of the time, once you get down here, is a man. Um, we also do not know his name, but he likes women a lot. Women have reported having their hair touched, breasts on the neck, their butts being touched. I joke, because I've been here for five years with these spirits, so I call them the perv. I wouldn't suggest you do that, but that's what I call them, just because we don't have a name for them. Um, but I just joke with them all the time. Um, there was one time I was actually doing Estes method in that bathroom over there, which is one of his hiding places. And the crew was actually out on this back porch asking questions from there. Um, we had the phone in here to record, and I was hearing um, him say like some weird stuff, but then all of a sudden I hear a growl, but I didn't hear it on the headphones. I could hear it behind me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just heard a growl, but I don't think it was on the headphones. And then right after that, he goes, now we can go to the beds. I'm like, you can go to the bed, I'm not going to the bed. No. And they sent somebody down to get me and they came back up and listened to the recording. And right before I say there was a growl, you hear a growl. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but he likes to hang out in this bathroom area and in the room with the beds. Those are his two main hiding areas is what I call it. Not down that way. It's like huge, it looks human shaped and it walks on all fours. Gross. Love that. And then there's a lot of screaming down here. Did people get, like, closed into places? So this is where they were pulled for parole. Ah, uh, got you. These are the, quote, jail cells. Ah, uh, makes sense. <laughs> but they were mostly for women of petty crimes, like writing bad checks. Besides <laughs> one person. Technically, she wrote bad checks. That's what started it. Yeah. But you can share the story. <laughs> it was innocent enough, but... Do you want to share it? I just see if she picks up on anything before I share it. Because they usually don't see her in here at all. It's because she really actually wasn't in here, though. <laughs> yeah, she was here. I mean, she was she, here, but I don't she think she here, actually was, she was like... She was here for a short time because they found out that her husband was a high-ranking person in the military. So she was moved quite quickly. So on paper she was here, but she really got, like, the nice treatment. Mm -hmm. That's what she said, sorry. Did men close them in here? Mm hmm probably. I think they did horrible things to them. <laughs> but there's a man that was standing in this doorway. Mm -hmm. He's so, tall, he has facial hair, his dark hair. There is a man that they say they see or pick up 
Um, I guess um, he usually says like get in the bed and he growls sometimes. You'll pick him up on the EVP. Which is funny though, because when she said they heard a growl, I thought it was more like a oh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking too. Thing too. <laughs> that makes sense. Because um, he, like, if you were to talk to him out in the normal world, he would be fine. He'd be like some rich, well off dude. But when he's in here, he shows all of his dark, gross things. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Our, our tour guide said that she calls him the perp, but doesn't recommend us calling him that. So. Yeah. You know, he is, he's not scary, violent like the uh, infirmary. He is like composed until he's not composed. <laughs> Just a little pop down there, it's fine. But yeah, there's a really scary, gross black thing that's like too tall to stand down here. Yeah, there's a seven foot shadow man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But that's overrated. So. It, they say that a seven foot shadow man travels throughout the building. It's different. Sorry, that's the first answer that I got. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. It's <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, it's like this tall on all fours. So it's like a grizzly bear. Oh, are you telling me it, it runs on all floors and then like stands up when it wants to? Is that what you're saying to me? It wouldn't be able to stand up okay. down here. Insert demigorgon. <laughs> runs on all fours and then all of a sudden just stands up and comes at you. I would shit my pants. If you were in a place where the ceiling was higher, it could stand up. But it can't stand up down here. So you're telling me that it does do that then? Yes, it's just, it's too big to do that down here. Okay, well, I'm gonna shit your pants now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's why I was over there, because I was like... <laughs> it's like, that's a precarious thing to be walking around. <laughs> yeah, going to these places with dark things, because we went to the Bel Air house and there wasn't really anything there. <clears throat> Going in these places with these dark things is weird because I, uh, it's like things you can't imagine happening or seeing. It's just fucking walking around like it's normal. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, well, I just work here, so. <laughs> I just work here. <laughs> so, as you see, we have a hole in the floor. Um, <laughs> the reason the hole is here is because. The current owner, Anna Ab Kimmel, um, when he first started, when he first purchased the building, we'd house, we'd have the house, our flashlight tours where we do kind of like what I'm doing now, the history tour and that. And people would come through and say, did you know you have a woman buried in your basement? And we're like, what's he talking about? So then he started telling us the story. And the story was supposedly around the turn of the century, a teacher's aide was having an affair with somebody here that was a higher up, had gotten pregnant, was coming to tell him and his wife she was pregnant. And then she disappears. Um, and people would tell us she was buried in our floor. Um, so we had a TV show out a couple summers ago, and they brought in two cadaver, two trainee cadaver dogs. The first one went through the whole building, didn't pick up on anything, until like right around this area, does a little pat and tell that something's here. They take that one out, bring the next one in, nothing through the whole building, until like right around this area, does a pat and tell that something's here. So then we did ground penetrating radar to the whole basement area, and here, about two and a half foot down, they actually caught an anomaly on the screen that was about the size of one of those little mini footballs. So they asked if they could dig. They dug two and a half foot, found absolutely nothing, went down almost three foot, still didn't find anything. So then they actually went and got our active canine unit. That dog wouldn't even go through the whole building. As soon as he got to the doorway of the hallway, he started barking and pulling in this direction. So they just let him go. He comes running down here, runs around the hole, comes over here and does a little pat and tell that something's here. So a couple different things. Because um, when the excavator was digging, he kept telling us over and over again, it doesn't make sense, there should have been something here. So it's possible that possibly somebody was buried there and then moved, and not to be morbid, but when you decay, pieces of you might fall off. Um, so we might have missed something, like a tooth or a finger or, you know, something smaller. So we did keep the whole dirt. It's actually in the room across the hall. We've been sifting through it slowly. But the other thing, which I lean towards, should listen to the dogs, not the technology, and we should have dug over here. Um, and if you actually look, did I bring a flashlight? I didn't bring a flashlight. Yeah. We've actually started to tunnel that way. Mm. Um, this is original brick and stuff, so we don't want to tear up the whole floor if we don't have to, so we've started to tunnel. I'd say we're probably this far. But once we get over here, if we find anything, this whole floor will probably get opened up. 
You just see a lot. Do you see the man that like is associated with that? Well, I was wondering if it was him, but I don't think it is. No, he has different color hair. He's yeah, very he's... different. It, he has like very like mm -hmm. groomed hair. The dude that uh, you're talking about has more like ungroomed, unshoveled, fluffy sort of hair. Is it blonde or like dirty blonde? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they think, so they either think one or two things happen. Either they're over here or they were buried here at one point and have been moved they? since. The girl? Yeah. Wait, they dug her back up and were like, oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna move, move it. somewhere else. Also, they still have all the dirt and they're sifting through it too to see if there's anything like left over there. And that's over in this room. Which the is why there's like kind of like a hole here is because they're trying to not break the brick, the original brick. And they're trying to see if there's anything like over in this area. Which is just fine. I'm just glad that you see the same man in the corner. Because <laughs> yeah, I was like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, as soon as he said that, I was like, I saw him standing in the corner. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything you think about this hole? I don't think she's in the hole. I don't think she's over here. You said you don't? Or no. You... I don't know. I spit around. Oh my god. Sometimes right. souls don't tell us secrets because you're not yeah. supposed to know. Yeah. It's also possible that he's telling me the opposite because he doesn't want people to know. Uh, yeah. Well, well you heard it here first. Time. Emily's always right, so there's nothing here. All right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, always right. <laughs> but as of right now, we haven't found anything that looks suspicious, so... Have you ever picked up, like, information, like, paranormal information for a man in here? Mm -hmm. Okay, because he's just standing there, menacingly. Like, what's your what's your problem, Joe? I wonder, I wonder which one it is though. There's a couple men down here. He's a little bit older. And he's very like quiet and staunch and educated. He like stands with his hands. Oh wait, like, you think I, you, think, you know what I think it is? Fine. He has like a brown tweed suit. Oh no, that's not who I thought it was. It's, like it's it the other one. Forties. Yeah, I know where it is. So. <laughs> yeah. That's the one I like to poke. <laughs> <laughs> He's with me. I should know better. He's with me every time I'm here. He's like um, very smart. Yeah. You'll learn about him on the next one. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure he will follow. <laughs> so the area we're going into now, this is the hole. I would not recommend like, standing. Hole? Yeah, this is the hole. I mean, it looks like a hole. I was like, you mean the big hole in the floor? I wouldn't recommend standing here, because I don't know how stable that is. Considered. She didn't even tell me either. <laughs> don't stand. <laughs> what, are you standing on that? that? Yeah, well, I was standing right there, because she was there, and I was trying yeah. to be in frame with her, kind of. standing here, and she's like, oh, yeah, we're digging underneath there. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> no, it's what she said after that that was worse, so. You're right. Anthony, you want to stand next to Em and explain? Or ask her what happens and then explain. There's a dude in here. Thank you! <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes, that is exactly what I said. <laughs> I found him too. As soon as I came in, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, Mr. Judgy Pants, what? <laughs> We're, there's a hole. You're here. It's a party. <laughs> Does he tell you anything more about himself? Because he didn't say anything. He just glared disapprovingly. Do you have like military? Um. Yeah. Possibly, but we don't know who he is. If it's the person that they were saying, technically no, but technically yes. He would think he has authority over military. He has facial hair, dark hair. Yeah. Um, he's thin. Uh huh. He's a long face. He has a very structured face. Like that looks cut, cut. What are these called? <laughs> I mean, he got those. He got those uh, cheekbones. Yeah. Cheekbones <laughs> and that jawline. <laughs> <laughs> the crimson chin. So, <laughs> what do you feel about this hole? What does he have to say about it? Because he wasn't saying anything. He's just standing there menacingly. Yeah, he has nothing to say about the hole. Yeah, why are you here though? Why is he here? Yeah. It dates something to do with military stuff. He shows me like cannons or like military arm stuff. And when I say he shows me those things, those are just symbols to tell me that he deals with some sort of war thing. Mm. So, I don't know. So on this floor, down at that end, they have what they call the waiting to die patient. So basically what hospice is, is today, 24-hour care patients, things like that. This first room right here on your right um, is the um, family sitting room. 
then this would have been the superintendent's office. And then all the superintendents, like I said, lived in the building. This is where they lived. And so that would have been like a fa fancy living room for entertaining, and then this was like their family living room, and then through here are their bedrooms. And the reason I'm taking you this way is there's a story that's going to line up with this. So. Yeah, would have, would have had their children here with them. Yeah, because there's a woman when she walked in and they have two children. I feel like one might have passed, but the other one was older. Okay. <laughs> they have like blonde hair. Do you know? I don't male, know. Male, female? Oh, children. Um, I feel like the one that survived is older and he's male. The other one also might have been male, but he might have passed when he was younger. Right. Um, so we had four major superintendents at the building. The first one was Commander Weber. Um, the second one was Otis Neal, the third one was Captain Wheeler, and then the last one was Delbert Nixon, who I talked about in the basement. Um, in 1911, Otis Neal moved into the building. Um, he Back then, when you moved into here as a superintendent, you were supposed to be here for many years, and the state literally paid for everything for you. So they like sold their property, all that stuff, and they move in. It was him, Otis, his wife Mary, his, his daughter, her stepdaughter, who was 15 at the time, um, they move in. A couple weeks after being here, they get word that they're going to be thrown out because Commander Weber, the first superintendent, did not want Otis Neal here because he was not military. And everybody here was military at the time, and he just thought that he couldn't sympathize with them. So that night that they find this out, Mary leaves her bedroom, goes through his bedroom, through the living room, out to get a glass of water, comes back the same way, stops in his bedroom, kisses him on the forehead, comes in here with a gun, wraps it in a bed sheet, shoots herself through the heart. And then the 15 year old stepdaughter finds her the next day. I don't want to give you too much information on this, but <laughs> because I want to know, because I don't think it was suicide. Um, there's reasons why. The one big thing that's always stood out to me is literally this, she did it in this room. He's asleep in the bed next door. 15 year old daughter, asleep, stepdaughter asleep in one of these rooms over here. If you had doctors, nurses, whatever, staying the night, and your maid, anything, they would be in one of these rooms. 24-hour care patients with doctors and nurses who are awake all night with these patients. Why did nobody hear the gunshot? A 1911 gun wrapped in a bed sheet? You're not gonna, how could you not hear it? So, I looked into Otis. Um, he was married before, also to another lady named Mary. She died of a broken heart. Um, you generally don't die of a broken heart unless you have um, something tragic happen. Turns out they had an older daughter that he killed. Um, she did a mild infraction, he punished her, she dies from that punishment. That's all the article said, didn't give any details, nothing. So then, so let's just say she did commit suicide because they were gonna be thrown out. He ends up being here for 16 more years. She did it for no reason. But while he's here, all the women patients are literally um, writing letters to the board, trying to get him thrown out, saying he was mean to them, he was mean to their matron, who was Emma Jean Marshall. Um, he was very mean to her. He would call her an imbecile and a damn fool. That doesn't sound like a lot of really bad stuff for us, but back then, you just didn't do things like that. And then they was also taking all the women's pensions, telling them they didn't deserve it. Their husband fought in the war. They didn't. So he'd take all their money and leave them $10 a month. So then fast forward 16 years after he retires, that 15-year-old, his daughter, is now living on her own. He goes to live with her. Six months later, she runs in front of a car that's 20 feet away, dies of the injuries. All the witnesses said there was no way she did not see that car coming, that she did it on purpose, basically. So then he ends up dying in 1939 with a net worth of over $52 million. So, I don't know. That's a lot of money for 1939. A lot of money. Um, he's the one I like to poke. He's the one that doesn't like me, and that's why he might have been saying, and so it is, down in the basement. Because he usually follows me when I'm here. Mm. <laughs> Do you know if he had brown hair and like a mustache? Yes. I can show you his picture actually when we go downstairs too. Gross. I don't want to know that. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't usually see people's pictures, they're just there. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, the, the woman that was in here is, she has like long ringlet blonde hair. And I feel like she wasn't related to him. She wasn't with him when he was here, or she knew him and didn't like him? She wasn't related to that super. Okay. It was a different one. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. We I don't have record of who, what all children lived here with them. Yeah, no, um, that's all right. I know the one. I think um, we get Wheeler's wife a lot, because she was really into, like, helping. She was super nice to the insane people. She was, she just treated people very nicely. What was she her was, husband's name? His name was Don. Okay, I think that's her. Okay. Because you said one of the W's. And I was like, oh, because it'll look like this for me, oh, which okay. means yes. So okay. yep. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, she's much nicer. She's like sing songy, she, like uh, like that a princess, like, nice like, yeah, like a Disney yeah, princess sure. type thing, like sing while you work or whistle while you work. Yeah. I'm a smoker. I don't usually smell cigarettes, but it's a problem smell of cigarettes right there. Um, I did. I used to be a smoker and I smell it too. You smell it too? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was strong. I remember when I walked through that doorway. <laughs> I think this? Otis smoked. Um, I think they did. Can I ask you a question about the um, superintendent? Yeah. Who, when was the first and that was Otis? And who were the other two? Captain Wheeler, it would be Don Wheeler, who she thinks she picked up on his wife. Um, and then Delbert Nixon. Um, I just so want to remind people. Tell so. people to stop smoking when they were dying. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Because when you said that, uh, there's like an old man that walked by and he's like, He told me to quit! I told him to fuck off! <laughs> what if that's your level? Same. It sounds like him. Because I think that's why you smoked the cigarette, but he's very like, he like walks and just talks to you, but like doesn't like look at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. old man. Right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Whatever. I like to hear whatever you pick up on. Um, so, I just want to remind you, just because I'm not talking about certain areas doesn't mean things don't happen there. Um, I always tell people, especially if you're feeling drawn to any area in this building, go there, because it usually means somebody's trying to get your attention. We actually had one of our shortest ghost hunts over here. Um, we came in one night after a private team left, because they left super early, and we're like, we're going to go in. And they, it was back when her and my other friend actually first started volunteering, and they were very afraid of the building. And they usually wouldn't go in, and they're all like, oh, let's go in until we hit these stairs. And they were like, no, we don't want to go. And I'm like, no, just come on, you're with me, nothing's going to happen. We get into a room, and there used to be this lady I used to talk to all the time. She, now I feel like she comes and goes, or she's totally gone now. Her name was um, Agnes. Mm -hmm. And she used to like protect me when I was in the building. And she would tell me if things were getting creepy, get out, stuff like that. We came up here, we get in there, we had a, a spirit box with us. We get into the room, and we heard baby cry. Not on the box, by itself, we didn't even have it on yet. Newborn, that newborn baby cry sound. And it's not like it's coming actually from like around this area. So then we hurry up and turn on the box and Agnes, Agnes, Agnes you could tell her because she was very proper when she spoke and she said, you must leave now. So just look. Yeah. <laughs> if Agnes told Shelly to leave, Shelly usually look. <laughs> so Sarah is, shows herself mostly as an eight year old little girl. But sometimes she will show herself as an adult and say she's Sarah too. Um, we have no documentation of children ever dying here. We have documentation of them being here. But back then they didn't document things properly, probably not even children's deaths, especially, especially if it happened in the asylum. Um, so it's possible that an eight-year-old died here. Um, but that wouldn't explain her showing herself as an adult. So we have theories on what she could be or why she could be here. Um, one of the things that stands out in my mind a lot that I've always leaned towards is this floor was used for the dementia patients. I feel like she might be a dementia patient just showing us how she was when she was here because sometimes they will be very childlike, sometimes they will be very adult-like. Or say Chelsea's dead and she's across the hall like she is right now and we're here, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. She may come in and say, I'm Sarah, talk to me just to get our attention. Another theory, there are a lot of Sarahs back in the day. It's possible we have two different Sarahs. We always joke that there's like a lady in white, her name is Elizabeth or Sarah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of Marys too, it yeah. seems. Um, but another theory is something we call a thought form. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. That's basically, especially a place where a lot of trauma happened, the energy stains the walls as we put it. So say one of you is super scared tonight and you scream super loud, 10 years from now, I might get that on a recording, but it is, it's just a residual thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you could actually create a haunting that way too. Um, kind of like poltergeist-like activity works. But then you have also people who believe she's a demon. 
Um, I've been here for five years. I honestly don't think she's a demon. And it's not that I don't believe in that. I just, I believe wherever there's good, there has to be evil. But I just don't think she's a demon. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason they think that is because of the money. Um, Adam had a public investigation here, first time he, like within a couple weeks of in the building. He comes in here and he asks Sarah, what do you want or what do you need? One word that night on the recording, money. That night, a lady left a dollar for Sarah. Monkey see, monkey do, everybody leaves a dollar for Sarah. Or they bring her toys, or the bedding, or anything, you know, they bring her stuff all the time. I was guilty of it the first time I came here because I already knew about Sarah, so I bought her a little rubber ducky. I mean, I don't think she's a demon. Um, <laughs> I've made her mad twice, and I think if you're going to make a demon mad, you'd get more than just a little bit of burning on the back of your neck. Um, <laughs> Yes. Um, if somebody had dementia, like the mother of somebody, would their children come here with them? No, but the women that were misplaced during the Civil War would have had, and they were over here for a short period also, and they would have brought children with them if they had them. Okay, because I feel like Sarah was actually a child, but the reason she comes here is because her life wasn't very good after she got out of here. Okay. So it's one of the happier places from when she was alive. Dementia patients are not. I know people get like really freaked out about dementia people. So I've worked with dementia patients. So. It makes me <laughs> angry. Right? And my too. mom does too and she'll like when I call her she'll be like, Oh, can you talk to Sally for a moment? And if she's like, I'm on the dementia ward, just talk about something so I can push pills. I'm like, okay. Right. And it's just cute because they're not scary or bad. You just they're living right. in a different time and space in which they existed. Right. at a different point in time and she's like it's like a guessing game we just have to figure out what day 40 50 years ago are they living in and just go with it yep and that's yep. it if i had one lady that i used to work for and it, sometimes at dinner time she'd get confused yeah and she would be waiting for her husband where her husband had been dead for five years yeah and i would just have oh he's working in the field so he just called and said he's gonna be a little bit late to go ahead and start otherwise she wouldn't eat yeah so you'd have to tell her to start without him he's like go ahead and start without him and she would start eating or if I sat down and ate with her my meal, then she would eat too. I was just talking about how, like, when she was here, talking to people like that was fun because it's like they're living in an imaginary world. But when you're a kid and they're like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm playing with ponies. And they're like, I just saw ponies outside. Right. And she's like, that's great. <laughs> it's really, really cute. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but when she left, like, in foster care. Okay. You don't, you're not prepared for the real life. She's like, it sucked. She's like, so coming here is better. Because it's where I was happy. Okay. Makes sense then. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. She's been talking. No, that's fine. She does talk a lot. <laughs> She's very um, nice. So, we also find if you come in here and you're talking to a child, you're going to get a whole lot more activity. If you come in here telling her she's not a child, she kind of gets mad at you. Um, <laughs> that's why I did on accident. Um, it was actually just a tour and somebody asked me, what do you think of Sarah? I said, I don't know, I'm really, I don't know if I lean towards a child or not, you know? Mm -hmm. And she took it the wrong way. <laughs> I didn't mean she was a demon. But, yeah, um, no, they can show whatever age they want to. Okay. Even though if they passed as, like, a 60-year-old, I mm -hmm. talked to a lady, her great-grandmother always comes through. She was, like, 97 when she died. She comes through as a 38-year-old. And she says, because in your 30s, you can be a cougar. You can get old guys and young guys. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So every time I read her, I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> Some people believe that the closet is a portal. If you know how to figure that out, you're welcome to try. Um, I don't know anything about that to know how to tell. I've been in that closet, investigated it. I didn't. The only thing I could explain the one time was it felt like sag electricity through my body. Mm -hmm. it like my hair was standing up. I felt like my hair was standing up when it wasn't. Um, the hallway, pay attention to the hallway when you're in this room. There's somebody that likes to almost get your attention, almost like they're trying to get you out. Um, Sarah refers to him as the bad guy. And like she'll even say danger as he's coming. I think it's Otis, but I don't know for sure. Um, <laughs> just because I know how bad he was with women and children that seemed to be. Um, so she always, but she always says that he can't come in here. It's like he's not allowed. Like this room's protected from him for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get scared in the building very often. Um, I get creeped out. But that hallway, some nights, I don't want to get, like, I literally will walk with my head down and just walk. Mm -hmm. Because it's just this feeling of, almost like you're surrounded. Mm -hmm. It's a weird feeling. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, go away. Hey guys! Hot sauce of truth. Yeah. Don't scream that while you do that. Hot sauce of truth! That was a lot. Okay, what, is, what, are, what do we do now? <laughs> so how do we read this? <laughs> yeah, all my foot. It's on fire. There's a casualty! <laughs> um, Emily, <laughs> read this like a tree. I don't okay, understand. Okay, so... <laughs> That's to the... To the...
Isn't it to the... Isn't it that way? Oh no, it's that way. I'll just have to go downstairs first. Come on, yeah, you're good, yeah. Cool. I'm waiting on these... These... These flat foots. I'm coming! I got my hand warmers. Do we want to close this here? Just oh. to try to keep it warm? I don't know if that was me. It's not. Can you make it stop? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> I apologize for my potty mouth. Anybody that's right. not physically here. Are you a lady? Mm -hmm. Are you a man? Are you a scary thing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like when I make fun of scary things? Oh! <laughs> He's like, that's not nice. Are you like one of the shadow bears? Are you a resident? Are you a little weird black ball of shit? Are you things that people talk to? You Can like, you just turn it on again if you're actually here? And it's not the EMF fields of this place. Well, why would it just like go on and off when I ask you a question? I don't know. She said sometimes in one of the hallways it It's the main does hallway stuff. down there by the yeah. bathrooms. Oh, is that why you moved that? No, it's not even close to here. It's in the hallway by the uh, bathroom. Uh, 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 uh. Got you. It was, I moved it because it was in the way of the music box and it was uh -huh. continuously going off and I didn't feel like walking down the hallway. Got you. Yeah. Are you turning it on because I have a potty mouth? Well, that's good. <laughs> if they're still here. <laughs> that just went off, but barely. It was like moved. So, we're down in the, what would you call this? Like the prison or the holding rooms? It's like yeah. the prison holding rooms. It was used for women inmates transferring from, I think it was like Marysville or something. It's in the two or, pot, or two or part. But women that committed like very small crimes, such as like checkbook fraud and stuff like that were here, but they were here before getting parole basically. So it was very low level criminal things, like looking too good at the grocery store. <laughs> Um, except for one person who had a bad part in their life, and then I guess was good for the rest of it. So, yeah, yeah this is where they held the women before they got out on parole. So, we have REM pod, because we're going to prove to Russell that it does work. We have two flashlights that are behind me, which are probably in a bad spot for her to see. You can see them? She can also them Um. Can you make her go off? I'm talking. <laughs> what does the orange one mean? It's just like the closer you get to it on that side. Easy. Oh, man. I don't know about that. Do you know? No, it's just like the sensitivity levels. Well, does it tell you where it's coming from? Or just like how close it is? What, what is side? It? What side? I believe it's what side. Yeah. Oh, got you. Till they're standing. Are you standing in between Emily and Janelle? Are you standing in between Emma and I? I think they're standing in between Emily and the REM pod. Are you standing behind us? Are your feet not touching the ground? Because that's freaking cool. <laughs> Got some wings. If there's someone here that wants to talk to us, can you make one of our devices go off? Can you also tell us if these flashlights go off? Yeah. Cool. I also feel like I just heard someone say, I don't want to talk to you, but I'm here. <laughs> Is it because we got too many funnies? <laughs> yeah. I don't <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't think like that we're just laughing and having a good time. So. <laughs> we got too many funnies. We're salty about it. Well, we... Like, you're not taking it serious. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you want serious paranormal investigators, that is not no, us. No. We like to have a lot of fun. Well, also if we're talking to a dark thing, we don't have to be yeah. weird. So, are you a, a lady or are you the dude? Okay. I feel like there's a dude talking because I was like, why does this work so well? And he's like, you know how that lady was talking about the EMF things going off? There's a lot of that energy that we use in order to make things go off. Oh. So because that energy is here, it's easier for them to use that energy is this to make those to things go off. No. We, yes, that happens, but yes, it <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to 
explode in my pocket. No, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> the other one is not a sack of air. <laughs> yeah, the tall ones do that. Laughs yeah, in French. You see me jump <laughs> off the ground. Can you please put that in the video? <laughs> we do that tonight. Laughs in French uncomfortably. <laughs> Uncomfortable French laughter. Do people talk to dark things when they come in here? Yeah. Since you said that, it, it went off. Yeah. Were we just talking to one? Was that what this was? Were you making the REM pod go off? He said no. This um, place is way quieter than this. The infirmary. Yeah. Did you hear the other knock out there again? Well, I mean, the, yesterday was windy. Yeah. I know. But I got used to the wind being weird, and now this is like very quiet. I feel like even if it was windy, it would still be this quiet because the windows are better and the building is like not made of wood at all. The other place had wood things in it. This does not. Does anybody want to use the things? Because I feel like they're all against the back wall back there. Mm hmm. Yeah, you do. There's like five of them. Yep. But I don't. They're weird. They're like, it switches back and forth from people to not people. Mm -hmm. The energy is just very jumbled in here, which is maybe why we're not getting like consistent answers. Got you. Do you feel like you're not allowed to come over here? Yes. The flashlights back there are going on. Should I move this REM pod back there? You can turn it off for yes, or the other one on. Yeah, we're moving back there. Yeah, because I got this like weird It's going to make wall. noises, but it's okay because she's just touching it. <laughs> I feel like this whole set are back there of women that didn't necessarily commit like a bad crime. I feel like someone might have framed them or something. So when they went to jail, they're telling me more like when they were transported here, people like roughed them up for no reason because it was petty crimes. So they didn't tell them where they were going or that they were on parole. Mm -hmm. There's like one woman out of all of them that is more like confident. And she's like, I knew that the prison warden officer guys were calling like I called their BS, but these ladies didn't. So they're like very nervous, but there's one woman that's very confident about it. Got you. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is there a wall between that and where you guys are? If you can interact with any of those things, would you do so so I can know if they are in the right spot for you? Yes. I feel like they have to use their like, combined energy to take things off, which is why it's taking longer. Got you. <laughs> they have to like chain gang. <laughs> They're all like hovering around like fire. <laughs> no, it's like they have to put their hands together and think about it, and then one person touches it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to meet you. Is there one woman that's here that had a baby at home? And they were taken to prison? Is there anyone that wants to talk to us? If so, can you make one of those things go off? Yeah, they want to. Okay, you guys got questions? Is there a weird dude here? Yes. Was he talking to me earlier? They told me no. We were telling you about him. Are you nervous to talk to us? Or are you just not answer asking the right questions? Yep. It's like those questions are not important. What do they look like? What are you talking to? Because I see a group of them that are all like kind of blurry, and then there's one with darker hair that's straight. Mm. And she has like bangs. 
I just asked if they were wrongfully took here and it flickered. Were you not supposed to come here? It's like more complex than that. They were supposed to come here based on other people's judgment of them. Is that true? Say it differently. Because other people thought it was. That's why they're here. Were you, you eventually released on parole? Were you just taken here to be judged on whether you could be released on parole? Yeah. Because they're like, we came from different states, so the fact that we were here, it was scary that we were going to get released on parole, but here. So technically we weren't going to go to a, we weren't going to go home, we were going to go to another place on parole. That's weird. Which is why it was scary. Is that right? Did a scary man just run in this room? Is there a reason why you can't talk right now? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> That's a good way to ask it. Yeah, I saw this man just come like barreling in through the door, like very loud, like mm -hmm. on a different timeline. It was like, you're not supposed to be talking. Got to. So. Um, is that why they're not really saying anything? Because they're not allowed to talk normally. I don't feel like people normally come in here and ask them questions either. Well, yeah. it's weird for them because they're talking from like their timeline. Yeah, that's why I keep seeing a wall between that and the stuff that's over there. Oh, it's like the the metaphysical wall between them and the us. The veil, if you will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we're talking to them from this timeline, but they're talking to us from theirs. Got you. Which is why we're seeing them back there like that. Is there someone in the hallway now? It was like a whoosh through the entire, like, room. Did anyone else feel it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> through the window. Yeah. That was wild. Like, I heard it out that way. Did I hear it? I felt it go through the room. Well, something like, rattled over there. It sounded like the... Uh, it sounded like... Door, something. like, moved or something rattled in there, like a shelf or something. Well, there's, like, plants outside on the window, though, as you can kind of see through the reflection. It sounded like the plants moved up against the window. Are you gone now? I think it switched to a different time. Yeah. Oh, you're showing it to me. Like something happened. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're being loaded onto a bus out front. Interesting. And they're cleaning this room for new people. Because they're showing me that the front of the building, which I think is that way. Mm -hmm. Where like the front steps are. And I see like a yellow bus and they're making them walk onto it. Is there a man in here cleaning? Oh my god, you can see this. He's like over by where Anthony is like sweeping. Are you showing me a page turning? Is there anyone that wants to talk to us first? I don't know that someone will answer these questions. I just like watch, it's like a page turned in here. But I don't know what, why it was like that physical. <laughs> Is the building doing it? Did you just feel that? What? Is, oh, is that like a thing? No, did anybody just feel like a wind on them? That's just what I felt. I didn't feel it when the first time, I just felt it like someone blew on my hand. Yeah. And then that thing went off. It like yeah. moved and flickered. Okay. That's what happened the first What's time to me. Literally felt like wind. I don't know what's doing Are you showing us the different timelines to make more of a story? Because you're not allowed to talk as much? Yeah. That's why we're seeing it. I just got chills through my whole fucking body. Same. <laughs> Wait, are you actively changing the timeline? And that's why it's so physical? It just got really cold where I am. It's cold in here. No, like my whole body has chills. Oh, I'm cold. No, it's like very, very cold. 
Well, I mean, didn't you guys just feel mm-hmm. the shift of, like, it's literally like pages are turning. I didn't like, feel like new yeah, chapter. Yeah. New chapter. You know, like in Azkaban, like in Harry Potter, where they show you Azkaban on the newspaper, and then you can change the newspaper, and it will change to like a different time. Yeah. See, that's yeah, what they're exactly doing. With like, because <laughs> they showed me a page turning. I don't. What the well, I don't get body chills unless someone's walking through me, but that's different. When I get chills, usually it means that we got a good like. It's confirmation. The theme, it's the theme of like an important theme of the entire thing. I've never had my whole body happen that before though. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Like the hair on my legs stood up. Mm-hmm. Do you want us to keep listening? Are you telling us this because it's different from what the people on the tour portray? Is it a, a man that's doing that? They like show us what they needed to and they're gone. <laughs> Cause I don't feel them back there anymore. But if, when you said, is there a man? I feel like someone you knew was standing in here. Cause I feel like they're gone. It was almost like you were lost in like. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. And it was only one click. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's weird that it's just one click too. He says he's the one that ran this place down here. Got you. Are you in the doorway? Can you do that again? I feel like he's the person that ran this secondly. He's not the original person. Um, I feel like the man that just like because they're gone. Like, you know when you're watching a movie and they do like a backstory montage and then put yeah. you back in the present? That's literally what I feel like right now. Yeah. And now we're back at the present and he's here. We're back Thursday. Yeah, like he's physically here. That's why it's easier for him to do stuff. Mm-hmm. But he's like in the building now, whereas before. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. I keep just getting repetitive chills. That's so cool. This is really this is important so weird. and I don't know why. Yeah, is there something that they want to say? I feel like the people that were here before, um, like there was a bad man that ran this part of the parole stuff, like whoever. Yeah. It, the bad man's not here, the nice man is. Yeah, I know. Is that he's the, telling us about it. Is that the guy that they were telling me about earlier? Yeah. Cause that's what I was telling you earlier. There's this dude that's like very like privileged going around and he like looks normal if you just knew him on the outside world, but he was horrific when he was in here. Did men close them in here? Mm-hmm. Probably. I think they did horrible things to them. <laughs> but there's a man that was standing in this doorway. Yeah, but that's not the guy that's out there right now. No, not at all. Yeah. That guy's nice. He's nice. He says, I want to tell you guys this story. He says he was showing us that, but they were also showing us that. He's like, because they're not really here, which is why they were like showing you the weird timeline parallel. Mm -hmm. But he's here right now. He says a lot of people get it wrong. Like they were doing petty crimes, but before I was the second, like, like, what is it? Officer or whatever. Superintendent. No, he's not a superintendent. There is a specific person that worked on this floor with the, uh, like the penitentiary or whatever that these women came from. They Mm -hmm. came from like a jail. And since they had like petty crimes and were going to be prosecuted differently on parole, like they came here to await their parole sentence, even though they were from different states. So he said, before I got here, more than that just happened. And no one talks about it. (laughs) I just got full body chills. Yeah. Like horrible things happen to the women. Yeah. Yeah. Because the exactly man what I was feeling when I came down here the first time, like horrible things, and that's why I was looking at you like, really what are you talking too. about? <laughs> like if you were to talk to him out in the normal world, he would be fine. He'd be like some rich, well-off dude. But when he's in here, he shows all of his dark, gross things. Because like no one was saying it, and I was like. 
Yeah, I won't say anything because it scares me. Really cold over here. It's because like the they're using the energy, the energy to do that thing over there. <laughs> yeah, horrific things happen. Yeah, it really it's bad. almost like he picked out the pretty ones to bring here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I understand that. I thought you guys knew that. And no. you just weren't telling me that information. No, they didn't say that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they, that guy. Well, okay, the people here, because that's what they're telling me, were telling me about the scary dude. And the scary dude did horrific things to the women. And, and that's what this, I was, like, very vaguely telling you, because I don't like talking about that stuff, because it's triggering for me. I think this place had a lot of, like, secrets, but not because people didn't know things were going on here. It's just been so long that people just have forgotten that it's happened, or it's just not written somewhere. So, like, it's just been so long that... It's just never spoken about. What did you say? It's just never spoken about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's why he's showing us this, because he says it's important for them to know the first person that ran this part of the operation is a horrible person. Yeah. Did the town know that there were horrible things going on here? No. Oh, that's exactly why I was telling you, this guy, you would have no idea he was doing these horrible things. Like, he was, like, proper, like, rich, privileged. People would think, like, people would think he was doing good things because he has so much money and he has the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And then he would come down here and do horrible things to people. So he's he's no not idea. allowed to answer this, but the nice man in the hallways or the ladies, is that the person? Yeah, thank you for answering. Is that the person what? That the tour guide lady calls the P word? Yes. Our tour guide said that she calls him the perp, but doesn't recommend us calling him that, so... Yeah. He usually says, like, get in the bed, and he growls sometimes. You'll pick him up on the EVP. Which is funny, though, because when she said they heard a growl, I thought it was more like a oh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> I didn't get that. I thought he was just no, because you told me that when I was talking to you about him. So that's why I thought that's why I assumed I you guys knew. I didn't know that he was in charge of the ladies. Oh, yeah, no, I got all of this information. That's really like freaking me out a little bit. No, this is very weird right here. Right? There's like a cold pocket right here. I put my hand out. Yeah. I'm like frozen in chills right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just asked them, I said, did we get the gist of everything we needed to know? And the flashlight turned on, and that's continuing to go off. So what did the lady tell you? Because now I'm like we'll a go little upstairs. bit psyched out. No, <laughs> we're going to go upstairs and talk about it. We're not going to talk about it here because I'm freaked out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I really we should, confused. he's saying not to talk about it down here. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't mention it down here. That's really weird. It's okay during the day and like the people that are here well, they to don't say it that. normally. We'll go, we'll go upstairs and talk about it. Let's pack up our stuff. Yeah. Mr. Nice Man in the hallway, will you make sure that we can walk upstairs safely? Well, I was going to say we're going to head over to the... Will you turn on the flashlight to make sure that we can walk upstairs safely? That would make me feel better than the scary music box. Oops. Are we not going to go to the hole? That's on the other side of the building. <laughs> Sorry, it shifted. Yeah. That's not him. Yeah. <sighs> Knock it off. We well, started trolling you long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mr. Pickerington. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we're okay. going upstairs. I need a break for a second. Does someone want to turn that off? Are you all too scared? <laughs> turn it off. I'm frozen. I can't do it. I'm stuck. Hold on. Is that our Say this is metal. Yeah, that's what I heard. That heard the rattle. But they're talking to us from there. Talking to us. Talking to us. Talking to us. Okay. Okay. We're gonna listen to you pee. I'm okay with that. I don't really am okay. I will. <laughs> Have fun, stay safe, don't talk to strangers. Uh. I mean, I can wait until.
until she comes back, but they literally didn't tell you that information? No. But yeah. I thought, okay. Sometimes I do this thing where I assume people know things based on the, how they tell me things. She literally told us that people get like touched and yeah. like hair. I mentioned it earlier too. Yeah. grabbed. He's like, yeah, I just call them for, for whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that's that. why you guys were telling me that. No, she's like, get touched, like you whisper in your ear. I don't, well, I don't know. I thought Liv said something because that's <laughs> immediately what I got down there. It was from that man. That's why I was like, he used to do weird things to women in here. <laughs> and like, I wasn't sure if like it was upstairs or downstairs. I can't remember what part, but she said some like there was like a bite or something like that. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So you said down. It was down there. Yeah. They didn't tell you anything. Biting. That. No, they told us about yeah. the biting and stuff like that, but they didn't tell us about. But they didn't. Okay, so they didn't tell you about this dude. No. No, we didn't know who it was. They just, she just knew about him. They like don't know who a, they are. Like ghost or something. Yes. Yeah. They don't know who they are though. Okay. Yeah, I thought you guys were like telling me that. I assumed you knew information. No, like they didn't tell us that at all. Yeah, no. I see a scary dude. He has dark hair. He has a mustache. And when he were down there, he was telling me that women were locked up in there and he would do horrible things to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told you guys. And then Liv was like, oh yeah, they call him the perv. And I was like, oh, they already know. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was just a normal person. Like, just like a normal, like... Oh no, he was like in charge of things. Like, he had power in there. Yeah, we thought he was like a, just like a guard or just somebody that... Shh. What? I'm pretty sure I just heard it, like a noise from down there. That was probably the scariest thing we've done. Since, really? Besides the addict upstairs. Although I don't think the addict was as scary as that, honestly. Wait, why? I didn't get full body chills when we were talking to me. Well, yeah. And I but they're doing that to give you confirmation, were they not? Yeah, but I also started hearing the scary man, which is oh. why I wanted to leave. <laughs> yeah, it freaks me out because that's the immediate thing that I got when I was down there. And I was telling you about him and I was like, he did weird thing to women. And then your response was, oh yeah, they call him the perv. Yeah, no, I didn't think, I thought he was just like a dude that was here because that's the way the tour guide lady. Oh, I got you. I think her name is Shelly. I'm sorry if I keep yes. calling you the tour guide lady. Hey, Shelly. Shelly. Okay, so Shelly was saying that there's a spirit down there that, like, will touch girls, like, play with their hair, like, pinch their butt. They heard a growl, but I heard it more as, like, a, you know, funny thing, you know? Oh, yeah, because when you guys were talking like that, I thought you just... She told you that stuff. Well, she told us that, but I didn't... She didn't... She doesn't know. They don't know why he's down there. They just think it's for whatever reason, gotcha. they don't know who he is. So we just got confirmation that he was the first person to run the parole program here with yes. those women. Sorry. Nobody knows I that. I thought you guys were telling me that information. Like, no. Because that's what I was trying to tell you. That's why we were looking at you weird. <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah. Shelly doesn't know that either. So when we walked in that room, I was like, why are we going in this room? We should go in the room at the end of the hallway because that's where we were before, right? That's what I was thinking. No, we got into that room for a reason, and you're the reason that we walked in there. Sorry. <laughs> it's called being trolled by spirit. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm trying to move my hand warmers down more into my pockets. Yeah, I like, the second we walked down there, I knew that information. Because I saw that man, and that man, they like told me about him. But let's also talk about, I'm a shitty judge of character. Oh, got you. Because you thought he was just funny, like being funny. Yeah, no, he's Oh, no, not. he was scary. He's horrifying. He's not like unstable like the guy in the infirmary, like I said. He... No, he's a serial. Yeah, but he has the like, everything's I'm fine. I'm aware. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. Because that's, why that's I less to intimidating than the like guy that like wants to like rip your throat out from the like infirmary day. No, it's scarier. So. Cause that's exact like Maybe that's I know. I know what that's like and it's stupid that I didn't know what that's like from a soul you know what I'm saying oh got you that's what you're saying yeah so it's yeah. like I mean I get that stuff immediately well I mean very good judge of character <laughs> also like he made it sound like it was a fun thing too so like it's not necessarily your fault that you didn't know because he was like it, like you heard the like the growl in like a funny way 
and he's like haha it's funny yeah but it's not I yeah. should have known better that's why he was yeah. basically just deceiving you so, so I, I don't I, think it's your fault got it M knows why it's important yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, um, I, it. I didn't know that so we got down there and they showed us that timeline for a reason and then the second good guy was there for a reason he's like people need to know that the guy that's down there is the first parole officer guy that worked with the other jail ward to bring women here for his own fucking gain mm -hmm. and it's not okay yeah. and nobody knows what horrible horrible things that he did so yeah not fun way scarier than the dude that's in the attic at the infirmary mm -hmm. so he's just sadistic yeah huh that's how they are though yeah so it makes me upset that i didn't know that sorry i thought you guys knew <laughs> mm -hmm. no now shelly will know not to talk to him because yeah. he's bad yeah she's definitely let her know she he should not be down there they should not talk to him at all because he's not good yeah I don't know. It was really tall. You saw the shadow? I think so, but there's so many lights I can't tell. Yeah. In here. Is there someone standing in front of that? If there Will is they any. move? Yes. Would you be able to move away from the music box and come in here with us? Should we face the music box in a different direction? Yes. Face it down that way. In that room there's not a residual energy, so working. Yeah. I'm just like talking to someone over here. Is there someone standing behind me? Yeah. Um, there's a man standing behind me. It's the same man that we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there someone buried underneath the stone here? Is that not true? Is that a rumor? I thought so. Okay. Are you the woman that the story's about? Um, is the things that I saw in my head correct? <laughs> um, okay. So what they showed me, because I was like, you guys are giving me too much information. I don't know if I'm making this up in my head or if this is real. Apparently that happened the entire night. <laughs> but when we were in here and you guys were telling me that someone was buried underneath this, I saw the guy with the fluffy hair and he had an argument with this girl because the story is true of like the affair type aspect and she they like pushed her against this wall and was like screaming at her and all that stuff so a rumor started that that was happening that someone got buried in here because they heard screaming <laughs> like loud yelling at people um but I don't believe he like buried her here. I'm not even sure, did she get killed? Cause that's all I see of the story is that she gets pushed against this wall. Did you maybe just, did you just want to do that? Like an easy way out. Um, did you tell her to leave town? Oh, did she... Did she do what I'm thinking she did? God damn it. Why does this place suck? Yeah, I, I think it's... Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because they, like... They told me the things that happened at the school that we went to. Uh, she unalived herself because of what happened in here. So, yeah. 
Um, and I feel like they just never found her because A, the rumor said that she was here, and B, she did it in a place where they wouldn't find her. Was it out of the state? I don't think so. I see her in like, like woods, like very far away from civilization. Yeah, it's, it's bad. <laughs> this weird mediumship thing is getting to me, you know, Russell? Cause like, literally I'm just like sitting here cause I'm like, I know you guys all know the story. So why aren't you sharing it with me? And I think I'm assuming the story in my head because that's how clear cognizance works. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, cause cognizance, I was... is a, cognizance is a bitch. Yeah, yeah, it is. You gave me a piece of information and I filled in the blanks, but I thought I was doing it because you gave me a piece of the information, so... which is, yeah. If that story is true, can you turn that off? I feel like. Oh. Is there a piece missing? Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I think yes. there's a piece missing. So. Can you touch one of the REM pods if there's someone that will talk to us? Yeah, I want to shit my pants. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the rest of the story is. Do I get most of the story? I feel like they're like saying it's like just shy of like the, the true story. Yeah, because I don't think she's buried underneath the rock. No, I don't think so. Um, I don't remember what the story you told me because they just show me it visually happening. Then he starts screaming at her and like presses her against this wall and then walks away and she is explaining to me that other people heard what was going on and because other people heard it, they started spreading rumors about what was oh, going on. You know what? What? We were talking earlier, the ladies across the hall, it's like a rumor mill. Yes. Essentially. This is where the rumors started. Yeah, you know, like the, the, the rumors started mm -hmm. across the hall so they heard it. And they're like, and they spreading what's going on over here? And then and she then, just disappeared. Is that the part of the story we're missing? No. I don't know about that. Um, but that's why people think her body's in here. is because they heard, like, shuffling and screaming. But I don't think he did anything to her, like, right. to kill her. Also, like, that'd be a lot of work to, like, rip this all out, too. Well, if he wanted to hide it, it would be a good thing to hide, but like... Yeah. Unless this was like a dirt floor in here at one point, but I don't think it was. Yeah, there's, there's brick underneath the cement. But she wanted to be with this man, and this man was like very aggressively angry about her existence, essentially. So that just like put her in a very bad mental state. Right. Which is like stupid, and I... <laughs> dudes do dumb things. Yeah, they do. So I think she like ran away and couldn't deal with it. So she unalived herself. So she's not buried here anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um But thank you so much for telling me your story. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Is that, is that what you would like us to share on YouTube? Or share your story as? Is there things that we're missing? Still She's like, I don't know which way you want me to say. <laughs> so, are we missing something? You can turn it on for yes. Oh my God, I cannot believe we missed this. The thing that we missed is if this girl from the story isn't buried underneath the floor, then who is buried underneath the floor? Because I'm editing. I'm watching the tour for the first time because I didn't go on the tour. And I'm listening to Shelly talk about the fact that they got evidence of cadavers being buried underneath the floor. But when they started digging, there was nothing there. And they were super, like, confused. Like, there should have been something there. 
when they started talking about this, I literally see this woman with very dark wavy hair who is completely different than the woman I was seeing related to the story about the affair. The woman in the story has lighter colored hair. It's lighter brown. And this woman I'm seeing has very, very dark brown hair. Her hair is dark brown wavy. She looks to be like 15 to 20, that sort of age. And she's very upset and very angry. And I feel like she was killed on the property somewhere. She was buried there for a while to keep it a secret and then moved somewhere else. And I don't know if it was just her or if there were multiple people with her, but she's very upset. And the reason why she's so upset is because so many things from this place get hidden and get buried because the men in power would like to keep it that way. And I find it interesting that Shelly also talks about this Otis guy that follows her around when she gives tours. And I have opinions about Otis. I don't think he's a good guy. And I feel like this guy, men follow the tour guides around to make sure that they don't dig up things that they want to keep buried. They literally follow them around to make sure that they don't share the secrets that the men in power want to keep a secret. And it's just, oh, this place has so much pain and it's just, no one is allowed to talk about it because of these very scary men that are in power. Cause she's like telling me, um, do you want me to turn it off if you're doing a good job or do you want me to turn it off because you're missing something. <laughs> okay, will you uh, turn it on if we told your story in the way you would like it to be shared? Is there a man that's impeding me talking? I don't know. I don't know if it has to do with anything with that man at all. So I feel like he's just here, just hanging out. Watching. Oh, not that dude. Different man, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can also say, is there a piece of information we're missing that you would like us to change or say? Maybe the the reasons that they think. Oh, gotcha. Because I don't remember that part of the story. The reasons why they think. He was upset with her. Maybe that is incorrect information. Was that a rumor? What they think that he was angry at you for? She says they got parts of the story. What was the story? Does anyone remember? I know Liv told me the story, but I was half listening. Again, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, the... I don't remember what she was saying because I was like listening to what the souls were talking about. But I know there was like some sort of affair, but I don't know exactly what the fight was about. Yeah, but I feel like that's what that's accurate. That's what you. That's the missing piece. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. But it's okay. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you talking to us. Yeah. I could try to pull it up on my camera, like when we came in here, but mm -hmm. I might take a minute. Well, we can ask Liv too, because she's yeah. the one that told me the story. Let me stop for a second. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Yeah, she's very nice. Because before I was talking to like a dude, the dude that's behind me. And then she kind of showed up, yeah. <laughs> but she's she has a very feminine, quiet, calming sort of personality. Um, so she's very nice to talk to. It's like this man made her feel special and then took all of that away. I feel like she doesn't want to talk about it. Like, she doesn't want to talk about the reasoning behind it. She says it's hard to explain to me. Because she's like, you're still learning how to um, 
understand those types of pieces of information. I don't know how to explain it, because she's like telling me that Liv is very good at having specific information from like stories of souls, but for me I get the like general vague idea, I get bigger picture things, and Liv gets like details. Right. Which is why I'm like, I don't feel like she's here, but I'm starting to get like, s like snapshots of things that happened in the past, which is why I like saw her getting smashed against the wall and being screamed at. Um, but like didn't say anything because I don't believe that that's happening. Mm -hmm. Learning these things. <laughs> so she's like, it's hard for me to explain to you things because you aren't trusting the information. So I show it to you, but you don't know what it means. Cause it's like, it's like I'm watching a silent film. She like shows me a couple snapshots. The first is there's like this woman that's angry. I don't know who the woman is. I don't know why she's showing me a woman. But that's what the media information I got when I came in here. And then she shows me, um, maybe one of the women that's like across the hallway found out and she was angry about it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to find yeah, out. I don't know that I can figure this part of information out. I have a couple of like theories, but I don't know if it's even close. I don't know. We're, I think we're close to like, we're just missing something somewhere, but yeah. I, mean, I don't know the theory to go on with if it's the pregnancy theory or if it's yeah. they were having a fair theory. Yeah. And Maybe there wasn't anything to do with pregnancy at all. Who knows? What are those like a, a theory of possibly getting away from here? But he was upset because he didn't want to do that because he was living two different lives. She also could have just not wanted a child at all. You weren't pregnant, were you? You can turn it on for if you were not pregnant. Turn it on if you were not pregnant. I don't know that she's still here. Yeah. She's like talking to me, but I don't know that she wants to like validate until I figure it out. So, I don't know that that will happen. <laughs> Should we move on and get live? Yeah. Uh, thank you for yes. talking to us. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to uh, interact with? No? Okay. Right. Right. <coughs> we talk to you with whoever is in that room. <laughs> you don't know who it is? I don't know who it is. Yes. Oh. That's okay. Um, she said that she, her body's not there, so she that's what they showed me. Yeah, same thing. That's, that's what they showed me too, but I didn't believe it. We are apparently. I thought, you guys were information. <laughs> I thought they were just showing it to me as reference. But that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, I see her like being screamed at by that man, which is what created the rumor about her. So. Yeah, we are fairly certain it was the ladies across the hallway that started the rumors uh, because they heard the commotion. Oh, in the washroom? Yeah, it's like a room well, essentially. That's funny. Yeah. When I was in here talking to Bradley, who was also making me feel better, there was an old Victorian lady that was like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> She was like patting my shoulder. She's like, he's a duty head, it's fine. They were just so excited to talk. Where do we want to set up first? We should just start in here first. I mean, there's a lot of activity in the place right here. Liv, do you want to do Estes method? It does. <laughs> Usually I would, but I'm a little nervous about it. We could do Estes method outside if you want. I would be comfortable with that. What do you mean outside? Well, let's say we get activity outside. Yeah. I'll sit outside at like one of the tables, you know? Oh, like out there? Yeah, yeah we could. Yeah, the front door. Yeah, if you want, I'll do Estes method in here. Okay, we're coming in here just to That's talk. That's fine. If you don't mind. Well, you want to do this? I like this girl. Just be 
careful. Well, he said that it gets very overwhelming emotionally. Yeah. So she's had to have people physically take her out of there because she gets like sucked into her emotions. Yeah. What yeah, do you mean? Like her emotions change. Like she makes you feel her her emotions, what she went through. She like physically yeah. influences you, and she's had people have to like take her out of there because she's like, I'm not leaving. You can't make me leave. 